Hey, what's up guys and welcome to the video. Now the vehicle that I've got for you today is used as a work truck in the owner's construction business. So as you can imagine, it is pretty filthy. It's a 2012 Toyota Tundra. So let's have a closer look at it. Okay, starting with the outside of the truck and it doesn't take long to see that it's pretty dirty and likely hasn't been washed for quite a while as the paint just looks dull and crusty as does the tonneau cover which desperately needs 303 and then the front end has also been hammered by bugs but that's not the worst of it as moving inside it's clear that the job sites haven't been kind to the truck as not only is there a ton of caked on dust in every crevice the door jams and sill plates are absolutely filthy the leather seats are dusty and even have some unknown grime stuck on them but overall every inch of the interior needs some intensive deep cleaning but just before i transform this truck Take a quick second and make sure you're subscribed to the channel and that you've got the bell on so that way you actually get notified when my new videos go live each week. Alright guys, well I cannot wait to get started on this truck and see how good I can get it looking. So as always, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Okay, getting started on the pre-wash rinse, and it might be hard to believe, but this is the very first Toyota truck that I've ever detailed. I've done tons of Fords and GMs, but haven't had the pleasure of working on a Tundra before, so I'm actually pretty curious to see what the build quality is like on these. Now to give you a little more background on the truck, the owner runs a drywalling business here in town and with over 280,000 kilometers on the truck or about 174,000 miles, it's clearly been driven a ton. Although the owner was telling me that he usually gets it detailed roughly once a year, so I can only imagine how much worse it would look if he didn't. Probably similar to the other drywallers truck I did last year that looked like there was an explosion of drywall mud on the inside. And if you guys haven't seen that video yet, I would definitely recommend checking it out as it was right up there with one of the dirtiest trucks that I've seen. Moving to the underside, and I know I see people ask in the comments all the time about how on earth I stay so dry when I pressure wash a vehicle, and honestly the answer is that I've just learned how to be careful with the pressure washer and have good control over it, but there's two areas of a vehicle that are always bad for backspray, one being the box of a truck and the other being the underside. Whenever I pull the sprayer out just a bit too far, I get a nice shot of water in the face.
Okay, just before I foam the truck up, I'll get some of my bug remover sprayed on, which will easily dissolve the remaining bug guts, making them really easy to remove when I wash the truck. Okay, with the truck rinsed, it's time to dry it and my Detail Geek Ultra Plush drying towel is the best way to do that as the double stitch towel is a pleasure to use as the two halves won't ever roll on each other and at 1250 GSM, it can easily handle drying this entire truck without needing to wring it out. So for any of you out there who enjoy detailing your own vehicle, well, I would highly recommend giving this towel a look. You can find it on my website at detailgeekautocare.com. All right, starting on the interior and the first step here is to pull the front seats so I can get at everything hiding underneath them, which in this case is where a good portion of the mess is. And you'll also notice I'm wearing my respirator today and that's because this truck has some very unpleasant odors in it. Now all the smells in here are from legal substances, but I certainly don't need my nostrils burned out so the mask is on today.
working my way around with the vacuum and for those of you wondering about the quality of carpet in here, well I'd say it's once again mid-grade just like the F-150 was last week, but I definitely put this as a step down from that as it is a little bit tougher to get the dirt loosened up. Although having the crevice tool on the vacuum definitely helps with that as I've got more suction and can get some good back and forth agitation going in the dirtier spots. Starting on all the trim now, and this is where my boar's hair detail brush really helps as it can get down into all the crevices that the vacuum can't and get the dirt and dust lifted out of there. Plus, doing this step also makes steaming easier later on as when I hit all those crevices with steam, there won't be nearly as much dirty water to have to clean up. Now as I move around the truck here, I figured I would give you a detailed explanation of my extracting process I follow, as I always see people asking about it in the comments. So after getting some Chemical Guys Lightning Fast Solution, diluted about 20 to 1, sprayed on, 
I'll agitate with my drill brush and then get to work with the Bissell, continually spraying water at the same time. And as I do this, I'm always watching the color of the water coming through. And once I see that it's coming through clear, then I'll switch to just extracting to get it as dry as I can. And to answer another question that I still see all the time, I only use hot water in the extractor as I pre-treat with solution. If there was solution in the Bissell, then I would continually be adding more as I worked, and that really wouldn't make any sense to me. So the way I do it, I can be sure that I can get all the solution back out. Here's everything that was sucked out of the tundra today. Gross. Okay, well since there's so much caked on dirt on the interior plastics, I'm starting by spraying on some Detail Geek APC, diluted about 10 to 1, and will then blast it with the steamer and brush attachment. Then I'll wipe everything down with a slightly damp microfiber towel, and once I've gone over the whole door, I'll then take the attachment off and blast out the cracks and crevices, and we'll then follow up with a dry towel to remove any APC residue. Now for all these door sill pieces I removed earlier, the steamer is the easiest way to get them clean and I can tell you from experience that trying to do this same job with just APC and a microfiber towel on plastics this dirty is significantly harder. The combo of the steam and APC literally just melts the dirt and grime off of these in a matter of seconds and after a quick rinse they'll be perfectly clean. So for anyone in the market for a steamer, I would highly recommend the McCulloch unit that I use. It's so incredibly versatile around a vehicle and can even be used inside the house too. So if you're interested, the link is down in the description for you.
Moving to the leather now, and given how dirty these seats are, I felt the steamer was the better option here over my horsehair brush. So with some leather cleaner sprayed on, I'll hit them with the brush attachment, and the steam is very easily able to loosen up that embedded dirt, and then I'll just wipe it clean with a microfiber towel, and then once I've got all the leather clean, I'll apply some conditioner to rejuvenate them a bit and give them that freshly detailed look. Now to dress and UV protect all the interior trim, I'm applying 303's Aerospace Protectant, and this is a product that I've been using for well over a decade as it's just that good. It's a staple in the detailing industry, and for good reason, it not only provides great UV protection, but is also going to leave the trim with a nice matte finish, and as you can see, I apply this to every bit of plastic inside a vehicle, including inside the glove box, even though I know the customer likely won't notice that, it's just not in my nature to do a less than perfect job. Starting on the glass now, and if you haven't picked up some of my glass cleaner and waffle weave towels yet, well I definitely recommend giving them a look as they are the secret to streak free glass, but if a 16 ounce bottle just isn't enough, well gallon sizes of the chemicals will be available any day now, so be sure to check out DetailGeekAutoCare.com or follow DetailGeekAutoCare on Instagram. Now one of my favorite things to do is apply 303 on a tonneau cover and that's because it just makes it look so incredibly good. And for any of you out there with a truck or even a Jeep with a soft vinyl cover, I highly recommend using this every time you detail it as it will keep it looking brand new and you'll wonder how you ever lived your life without it.
All right guys, well, I don't know about you, but I'd say the Tundra is looking absolutely spectacular after 10 hours of hard work. Now, if you agree with me, go ahead and smash the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, enjoy the guitar outro, and I'll see you guys in the next one.